Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the virtual launch of the COPE Galway 2019 Annual Report. My name is Sharon Fitzpatrick, Head of Development at COPE Galway, and I'm delighted to welcome you all to our first ever virtual event. Of course, we would have preferred to welcome you in person, but we're very pleased that you've taken the time to join us online. We are crossing our fingers in the hope that the technology holds up, and please do bear with us. If we have any technical issues, we'll get back online within a moment or two. If the call drops for you, click on the meeting link again and you'll be readmitted. We have over 70 people with us today and we will do our best to make sure that everyone has the best possible experience and gets to hear our speakers with the minimum sound interruptions. So before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. You may have noticed that we have muted everyone and turned off video. This is to minimize unexpected sound interruptions. Please mute your microphone and turn off your video if it is still on. We recommend watching the event in speaker view rather than gallery view. You can change this by choosing speaker view in the top right hand corner of your screen. If you're having any difficulty hearing the speakers, please let us know using the chat box. We have a packed schedule for the next hour. First, we will hear from Coke Galway CEO. Then we will have a short presentation from a representative of each of our homeless, domestic abuse and senior support services. We will then hear from our keynote speaker, Professor Fanula Nielon, who joins us from Minnesota, and we will finish by 2 p.m. with some closing remarks from our CEO. So thank you again for joining us. I'd like to introduce you now to Jackie Horan, CEO of Cope Galway. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today for the online launch of our annual report for 2019. I'd especially like to welcome Fanula Nielon, who joins us today from Minneapolis. I'm very grateful to you, Fanula, for supporting me, firstly, as a Galwegian, and secondly, as UN Special Rapporteur on the promotion and protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms while countering terrorism. Indeed, your work in general in the area of highlighting human rights issues at a global level is really impressive. And given the breadth of your work, I appreciate all the more that you're with us to support our work in addressing human rights across a range of areas and issues. I'd also like to welcome everyone else who's joining us for this launch. Our audience is made up of many, including our board of directors, our staff and volunteers, those for whom we work and whose stories you can read about in our report and who you will hear some of today. Those of you whom we work closely with here in Galway and nationally. Those who fund our work, such as our state funders, donors, philanthropic and grant making organisations, local corporate organisations and the really, really supportive community of Galway. We're also joined by others who advocate in Ireland and abroad for a wide range of human rights and by national representative organisations from across the community and voluntary sector. Our annual report is our opportunity to outline the wide range of work that we do on behalf of the Galway community. To demonstrate the impact of that work and to highlight issues that need to be addressed in supporting people in the pursuit of their rights and entitlements and a better quality of life. It showcases many stories of people whose lives have been touched and I hope improved by their involvement with Cope Galway. It is these personal stories that really are the essence of our work and I would particularly like to thank those people who were willing and brave in allowing us to include them in our report. Some of you are here joining us today and I extend a very particular warm welcome to you. I'll outline the content of the report in the very broadest sense and then you will hear from others about our work in our three distinct areas from people who represent those services. Our work is focused on improving people's quality of life and we do this by supporting home, promoting community and reducing isolation. 
Our last strategy came to an end in 2019. And during its lifespan, from 2013 to last year, we were able to respond to increasing demands during particularly challenging years. In relation to homelessness, family homelessness grew in an alarming way. In 2013, we worked with 19 families. And by 2019, that number had grown to 187. During this time, much of our work focused on simply finding emergency accommodation. However, a tourist type response was simply not appropriate for families. And so we engaged with local and national partners to advocate for better longer term accommodation and better supports. Single homelessness also continued to rise with levels of rough sleeping much more visible in Galway. While ensuring that emergency accommodation and day-to-day -day supports were available across all our services, we also addressed the chronic lack of housing for singles by bringing on street community housing, which has offered valuable opportunities for people to live independent lives in their communities. In relation to domestic abuse, the focus of our work over the last six years culminated in many very important milestones being reached in 2019, including a more extensive ability to reach more women throughout the county of Galway, the development of more individualized and therapeutic work with children, and the final chapter in the construction of our new facility which now serves as the hub to continue our work in highlighting and addressing the societal issue of domestic abuse in all its forms. And in relation to our older people service, we have steadily increased our services targeted at reducing social isolation and improving access to the best of nutrition. In conjunction with community partners, a model of lunch clubs has grown to 13 now in the city and county. We continue to provide one-to-one -one supports and also to support the development of a range of health promoting activities, including a new Helping Hands at Home volunteer project. And we have developed a new social enterprise, Meals for Health, to respond to the particular dietary needs of older people and others with chronic health conditions. The delivery of our strategy was also supported by our advocacy work at local and national level and by our fundraising and marketing work in order to gain the support we need to continue our work. So in 2019, we took time to explore how we can best respond in the coming five years. And as a result of our thinking and consulting, we are now almost ready to publish a new strategy, which of course will now also take into account our new reality of COVID-19. The broad thrust of our new strategy will see us continue to respond to growing and challenging needs, but to also look at how to address issues at the earliest possible opportunity through educational and early engagement work. We will also focus on achieving the best possible impact in our work through high quality services and advocating for systemic change. Another area requiring strategic focus is our funding model. A decade of recession and growing demands has led to a situation of chronic underfunding of the community and voluntary sector including the essential social services being delivered by Cope Galway. The response of Cope Galway and the sector in general to, COVID, to the COVID-19 crisis has demonstrated more than ever the value and the essential role played by community organisations. I have been so impressed with the local response here in Galway 
and the way so many organisations, both community and voluntary and statutory, all came together so quickly and did whatever it took to respond to local needs. And so I call on our state funders to engage in a new partnership model and to evidence this with adequate funding levels and terms and conditions for our staff which are equitable with those of the public service. The programme for government commits to delivering on supporting the community and voluntary sector to recover and enhance its impact in the aftermath of COVID-19. Supporting the dialogue forum, working with voluntary organisations to build a stronger working relationship between the state and the voluntary healthcare sector and full implementation of a five-year strategy to support the community and voluntary sector. And now that we have a new government in place, I call on them to deliver on this commitment and the many other measures set out in the programme to support our sector. Our employees and the many volunteers, including our board of directors who support our work, are our absolute greatest resource. They are the essence of Cope Galway and the work that we do. And while we need no reminder, the last number of months have been a testament to the day-to-day -day commitment of our team in making sure that the essential services that we provide are available to all who need them, even in situations of increased anxiety for all. And for that, I thank you all so very much. We also depend on the goodwill and generosity of the people of Galway and all who contribute to our work. This could be financial via our fundraising channels, corporate support, philanthropic, donations to our charity shop, in-kind support, the media channels and much more. To you, I say thank you, as we simply could not do our work without you. And to you all, I assure you that Coke Galway operates at the highest level of good governance and best practice. And so now, to hear about our work in homeless services, I introduce you to Sanjay Gulati, who is our Head of Homeless Services. Sanjay joined Cope Galway last June and his previous role was CEO of an organisation very similar to Cope Galway, operating in Mission in Vancouver, Canada. Having been with us now for a year, Sanjay has a good understanding of the homeless situation here locally and nationally and is working with his team and local partners to deliver long-term sustainable housing and supports for people experiencing homelessness here in Galway. Okay, Sanjay, over to you. Thank you, Jackie. Welcome everyone. My name is Sanjay Gulati, Head of Homeless Services at Cope Galway. We at Homeless Services are supporting people at different points of their journey so that they do not get stuck in the revolving door. I would like to share with you an inspiring story of Michael. Michael was sleeping in the tent for three weeks before he was assessed at Cope Galway Homeless Services. He said, and I quote, sleeping in the tent was a big wake up call. Michael was initially assessed by Cope Galway Day Center and then referred internally towards independence project at Cope Galway Bridge House. Over a six month stay at Bridge House, Michael addressed his issues with alcohol, with support from addiction services. He said, being helped to quit the drink helped me to get my self-respect. During this time, Michael also volunteered with Cope Galway Community Catering Service for a four month period. Michael returned to education and completed QQI level four and five in horticultural certificates. He said, through the course, others got to see 
I was really a hard worker. This helped me a lot personally and gave me back a lot of self-respect. He has since then returned to his own independent accommodation. He remains linked in with Cope Colvary Settlement Support and meets his key worker regularly. Cope Colvary Homeless Services saw the biggest increase in demand given the continuing housing crisis. 1,622 men, women, and children seeking support from our emergency accommodation facilities, a center, resettlement, and homeless prevention services. One service, one support is the kind of support model we have started to build in 2019. There is a saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Similarly, it takes the community to address homelessness. You will find various stories in this report highlighting this fact. And in particular, I would like to share with you a story of our fair green cats. Doses of humanity and empathy from the men at Cope Colway Fair Green Hostel, according to our hostel manager. These cats have shown the men's simple but powerful lesson of empathy and love. It is amazing to see over the years, cats have given reason for people to get out of bed, to make sure the cats are fed and are okay. An example of true selfless love. Hope you all will enjoy reading other impactful stories in our annual report. Thank you all again for your support and joining us today. Thank you, Sanjay. And uh, I'd like to let you know that uh, Michael, who Sanjay referred to, is joining us here today. And I know that you will all join with me in offering immense congratulations to Michael because the journey that he has gone on has been transformational. And uh, well done, Michael, uh, and we wish you the very best of luck in your future. And now I'd like to introduce you to Kira, who is the Children's Service Coordinator in our Domestic Abuse Service. Kira has been instrumental in developing and delivering supports and programs for children and young people who are witnesses and are affected by domestic abuse. Kira has particularly focused on offering therapeutic supports for children and also breaking the cycle of abusive relationships through work in schools and colleges. Over to you, Kira. Thanks, Jackie. Hello, my name is Kira Tyrrell and I coordinate the Children and Young People Service at, Mo at Go Cope Galway's Domestic Abuse Services. Cope Galway's Domestic Abuse Service expanded significantly in 2019 with the development of our new facility at Moella House and funding from TUSLA to extend the delivery of outreach services across Galway City and County. The importance of our domestic abuse service for Galway City and County cannot be overstated, with 638 women and children receiving support in 2019 alone. And this issue was further highlighted during the COVID-19 crisis and lockdown. But my focus is in relation to children and young people. And 2019 was a very exciting year for the development of this aspect of our service. The development of our new premises at Moella House really started to take shape and we could see the new children's service develop as construction progressed. The service was going to be much bigger physically with a larger playroom and outdoor play area. And we would now be able to offer a separate space for teenagers and young people in our dedicated youth space. Over the years of supporting children and young people who've lived through domestic abuse, we have adapted to meet their needs as best we could. We knew that children and young people who accompany their mother to refuge have their own individual needs actually within their own family. Children need their own space and time to understand what's going on and somebody to support them along their journey. We work with children both, both on a group level and on a one-to-one -one level to support them through the challenging time they're going through in a safe, supportive environment. We developed our education and awareness work, delivering healthy and unhealthy relationships programs in secondary schools, youth groups, and among the colleges. In particular, 
we know that young people especially struggle with making sense of what's going on at home at a time when they're already struggling through teenage years and starting to form dating relationships of their own. It was important to us that we developed a service for young people, a place that they feel safe to come and feel supported. The youth space can offer young people like Dara, whose story is in our annual report, a space to think, make sense of what is happening in his family and connect with other young people who have similar experiences. Working with children and young people in refuge represent a small percentage of children in our community experiencing domestic abuse that actually need support. We knew that if we had the capacity to work with children in their own communities, we would have much bigger scope and a bigger impact and we could really make a difference for so many more children and young people. Another exciting event occurred in 2019 when we received a visit from a representative of a philanthropic trust arranged through the Ireland Funds. This trust representative was particularly concerned about the effects of domestic abuse on children and took the time to meet some of our staff who work directly with children, as well as a client who also used our service. We met the stoner in our playroom at Waterside House, our former domestic abuse refuge, where we talked about our work, of our children's service, our thoughts about how best to support children and young people in a more therapeutic way and our plans for the future. Soon after, that donor agreed to make a considerable donation over a three-year period, which would allow us now to significantly expand our service to children and young people experiencing domestic abuse. Thanks to the generosity of the Trust, we are in a position to make some of our hopes and dreams for our children's service come true, and for this we are extremely grateful. Forward now to June 2020, Solisog, which means young light, is the name that we've chosen for our children and young people service. We offer a service to children and young people who are in need of accommodation at Moella House and for families in our community that also need support. We work with mothers in relation to parenting their child post domestic abuse and in relation to understanding their own children's needs. We are the service of record for the, almost the entire city and county of Galway and we can now offer support to women and their children closer to their home. We can now continue the support that we have started with children who stay at Moella House after they have left in a safe space that we have identified closely in their locality. We also take referrals from other services in relation to children and young people who are in need of support. For young people like Dara, our youth space is open for them for as long as they need to drop in and use a support. This space will develop over time and for young people who need it. Our educational work will continue and we want to really build stronger links with the city and county schools, both primary and secondary, and work closely with them to support and educate children and young people. This work will continue into the colleges in Galway, such as GMIT, NUIG and GTI, to educate the welfare staff and how best to support the students. Thank you. Um, and now to our older people's service. Uh, we will now run a short video giving you a flavour of our work with older people in Galway. After the video, you'll hear directly from Geraldine Ryan, who is the manager and the inspiration behind our community catering food service. Along with providing healthy and nutritious meals, which are tailored to the specific dietary requirements of older people, and others with chronic illness. We will also reach out to older people, offering a range of social and healthy ageing supports, which you will see and hear about in the video.
Hello everyone, my name is Geraldine Ryan and I work with Cope Galway Senior Support Services. I hope the video has given you a sense of the many social and nutritional supports our Senior Support Services provide and I'm delighted to have this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about two aspects of our work. Our social enterprise Meals for Health and our community support work. It may shock you to know that in Ireland malnutrition is one of the greatest threats faced by older people today. In 2019, we saw Coke Galway's social enterprise, Meals for Health, progress from early stage development to growth and scale. This social enterprise model has broadened our capacity to reach a larger cohort of older people, and also people of any age living with chronic illness, such as diabetes, cancer, or heart disease or whose nutritional needs may change over time as they recover or as their illness progresses. Our service development is aligned with government's national policy of providing the right care in the right place at the right time. For Maggie, aged 84, widowed and living alone, whose nutritional needs changed as a result of bereavement, illness and repeated hospital stays. Maggie was losing weight rapidly and at risk of malnutrition and subsequently increased risks of fall. Maggie's meals are enriched with additional calorific and protein to help her maintain a healthy weight and retain muscle mass. This means Maggie continues to live at home, connected to her community, maintaining as much independence as possible. For Sheila and John living in Gort, County Galway, John, a diabetic, has recently become the main carer in their relationship following Sheila's diagnosis of early stage dementia. Receiving home delivered meals means that they can remain living at home, enjoying mealtime together with fresh tasty food suited to their individual needs, while continuing to stay connected to their neighbours and friends in their own community. For Eddie, living in Salt Hill, who developed a swallowing issue as a result of a stroke. He receives texture modified soft food. And this means that Eddie is consuming a healthy, well-balanced diet to support his recovery at home with his loved ones. These are just some of the many great examples of how a fresh approach to community-based services support independent living at home for people within their own communities. Another aspect of our work is our community support work. Our community support work plays an important role in improving social supports for old people. Social activities play a key role in maintaining physical and mental well-being. In 2019, we offered a variety of ways to stay socially and physically active through exercise classes, arts and crafts, and weekly shopping trips. In the video, You'll have seen one of our community support workers with some older people enjoying one of those weekly shopping trips. And as the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. In the annual report, you'll also meet Martin, one of our wonderful volunteers, and read about his role in this valuable service. The weekly shopping trip gives older people an opportunity to maintain their weekly routines and shop independently. Teresa is one of the ladies who enjoys this weekly outing. Teresa is in her 80s and lives independently in local authority housing. She has no family support, but she had been managing really well. During 2019, Teresa experienced gradual changes in her health and her mobility. Cope Goway's community support worker helped Teresa to plan for her future. And Teresa has now moved to a ground level apartment and has applied for and received a housing adaptation grant to install a level access shower. Through her engagement with our community support program, Teresa has developed and maintained strong connections with her neighbours. Teresa has joined her local residence committee representing issues of concern relating to security and services to support healthy ageing within her community. Group and one to one community support work fosters an environment to enable stronger communities, supporting age friendly Ireland's vision to make Ireland a great country in which to grow old. 
Thank you, Geraldine. Now that you've heard about our service for older people and our focus on healthy and active ageing, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge here our colleague and our friend, Anne Kenny. Anne was the manager of our older people service for many years, and she inspired all to see the beauty and the opportunities of older age and always promoted positive and independent ageing with dignity and respect. Very sadly, Anne did not get the opportunity herself to enjoy the privilege of ageing as she passed away in January of this year. She is very sadly missed by us all. We pay tribute to Anne in our annual report and I invite you to read that to get a sense of the wonderful person that Anne was. And now I have the great pleasure and honour of introducing you to our keynote speaker today, Fanula Ni Elon. Fanula is concurrently Regents Professor and Robina Professor of Law, Public Policy and Society at the University of Minnesota Law School and Professor of Law at the Queen's University Belfast. She has published extensively on issues of gender, conflict regulation, transitional justice, terrorism and international law. Professor Nielon is currently the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Protection and Promotion of Human Rights while Countering Terrorism and has been nominated twice by the Irish government to the European Court of Human Rights, the first woman and the first academic lawyer to be thus nominated. And so I am very honoured to ask Vanula to join us now to launch our annual report for 2019. Gurmila Mahagiv, um, I'm really delighted to have this opportunity. Uh, I wish it were in person. COVID has me on the wrong side of the Atlantic. And so um, I'm really glad at least the technology allows me to do this um, and to support Cope Galway. Um, I'm going to start my comments with the phrase that many of you will know, er chéla a warren which is an Irish phrase that literally means uh, people depend on each other. And it's an evocative phrase which affirms the interdependence of people's lives. And it seems to me to be particularly apt in this tumultuous time because it uses the Irish word ska or shadows which affirms the unknown and the unseen ways in which support, help and interdependency is practically manifested. But it also alludes to the shadows that we experience as we live in the middle of a global pandemic, which has marked our lives, our communities and our globe for many months. We launched this report in the middle of this pandemic, which has tested our resilience. It's exposed our collective frailties and our vulnerabilities. It's illuminated strengths we didn't know we had, and it continues to challenge and upend our presumptions around health, around well-being, and around the very world we live in. I'm particularly privileged as a person who grew up in, was educated in, and returns to Galway as a place I call home uh, to launch Cope Galway's annual report. Those of you on this call, all 92 of you, which is extraordinary, um, have long been aware of what an exceptional and transformative organization Cope Galway is. Its effects are felt, as you've just heard, at the granular level of individual lives and in the collective results of consolidating the best, the very best of collective action at the local level diligently bringing local community together to support and enable those who need it most at particular times. Cope Galway's core goals, as its report sets out, include supporting home, promoting community and reducing isolation. And these goals may never have seemed as necessary as they do in the context of a global pandemic where home, home is one of the global solutions to fighting the pandemic where community solidarity is mandated through mask wearing and distancing and all those other things that we are doing to protect us all from an infectious disease we are still struggling to understand. 
and where the retreat from public life, public space, and random human interaction has created deep reservoirs of isolation across age, across gender, and across identities. Cope Galway's work is multifaceted and it includes promoting services and support to women and children who are the victims of intimate partner violence, including refuge accommodation, outreach service, specialised supports uh, for children and enabling access through the legal system through court accompaniment. Cope gives services to men, women, boys and girls who experience homelessness from prevention to shelter services and move on support, as you have just heard. It seems really obvious to say, but needs saying, that when the global pandemic makes shelter in place a legal obligation, the absence and the adequacy of shelter and home has, is starkly, has never been more starkly revealed. And it's the work undertaken by Cope Galway in our local context. It makes it all the more significant and indispensable. It's also obvious and very necessary to say that the enforcement at, ho at, at home or being at home as the frontline response to COVID has placed women at particular risks of intimate partner violence. As my colleague, the UN Special Rapporteur on Violence Against Women has affirmed, and I quote, women and girls already in abusive situations are more exposed to increased control and restrictions by their abusers with little or no recourse to seek support, end quote. Moreover, as Cope Galway's report demonstrates, there are hidden harms in the sphere of domestic abuse, including revealing in very poignant ways the vulnerable masculinities of young men and boys who are the hidden victims of harm in the household, asking the question, what about men? There is often a tendency to equate gendered harm with women and to presume that boys are immune from harm. Here, Cope's work in lifting the narrative power of stories from young men and boys to make visible that which is unseen and to acknowledge a broader and more complex array of harms of domestic abuse is a unique contribution of Cope Galway's work and a challenge to policymakers and service providers alike. The publication of this report at this time raises the prospect that despite being online and less physically connected, we are all the more profoundly aware of and sensitive to the fundamental needs and harms that result from that uh, being that, that lack of proximity. Connectivity has never mattered more and physical distancing shouldn't mean a loss of connection. One positive, if really unexpected outcome from the COVID-19 pandemic is the recognition that adequate housing and health constitute fundamental human rights that can, cannot be relegated as an afterthought of government policy. It might be possible to imagine a post-COVID world in which our policy priorities get reordered in a new way to deepen and, and actualize the delivery of health and home as rights and move us beyond flowery uh, language and rhetoric. Through all of the work um, that Cope Galway takes. Its work is significant, but I do want to take some time in the final minutes of this presentation to address the importance of the organization's work with older persons and to reflect on the value of care, autonomy and vulnerability in the context of COVID-19. It's important for us all to remember that vulnerability is an essential aspect of the human condition. We're all vulnerable at different points in our lives and that vulnerability is both inevitable and unavoidable, not least when we are children, ill, older, compromised by social and structural conditions not of our own making, by pre-existing conditions that are inherited or acquired through life, and by disasters like the one we're living through right now, uh, including health and environmental conditions. The inevitability of vulnerability uh, and the corresponding need that it creates for a care ethic has been etched into our collective consciousness in the last couple of months. And it may be that our shared vulnerability is what makes this moment so ripe for transformation. 
it also allows us to see that what might be called presumed vulnerability, for example, the presumed vulnerability of age, uh, uh, is, not, is not always uh, the only vulnerability. And it turns upside down the notions of who might be vulnerable and who might not be. I want to acknowledge the ways in co which Cope Galway has brought attention to the specific uh, needs and rights of older people, but in doing so has affirmed their autonomy and dignity. This is evident when one understands that not only are older people an important group supported by Cope Galway, but the volunteer community, which is the heartbeat of Cope Galway's work, are significantly made up of older adults. Our president and a fellow Galwegian has rightly reminded us that COVID-19 may be a time to protect older adults, but it is not a time to disregard, negate, nor underestimate their uh, contributions and their voices. Keeping people physically safe, and we use the word cocooned, although that's no, not always a word that, that uh, kind of illustrates the autonomy necessary in the moment. It may have little virtue if we rob individuals, particularly older individuals, of their autonomy and their dignity. As the United Nations Special Expert on the Enjoyment of Human Rights by Older Person, my colleague has so valiantly stated, and I quote, let's be clear, every life has equal value. Our rights do not diminish with age. We need to ensure that difficult medical decisions are guided by a commitment to dignity and the right to health and based on medical need, ethical criteria, and on the best scientific evidence, rather than on age alone. Less visible, but no less worrisome, are the broader effects of this health crisis. Uh, healthcare denied for conditions unrelated to COVID-19, neglect and abuse in institutions and care facilities, an increase in unemployment and poverty, and the direct impact on well-being and mental health due to physical distancing and social isolation and the trauma of stigma and discrimination, end quote. Cope Galway's commitment to community makes clear that the work with older persons is rights and dignity based, not founded on charity, tutelage or infantilization. These narratives are so aptly captured in the annual report and it underscores that the giver and the receiver are both beneficiaries of sustaining relationship through the community lunch clubs, the meals for health, and models of active and, and positive aging. As I close, now more than ever, we need to protect and support while valuing autonomy and self-worth. I close with an homage to wearing purple, the color of the dress I also have on today, captured in the delicious poem by Jenny Joseph, which is written into the, the report and it's entitled Warning. For those of you reading the report, it's on page 38 of the report. And it affirms the passion, the joy and the unexpectedness that infuses Cope Galway's work. And it's also beautifully captured in the celebration of Anne Kenny's life. So let me just, quote a couple of those lines for you. Here I go. When I am an old woman, I shall wear purple with a red hat which doesn't go and which doesn't suit me. And I shall spend my pension on brandy and summer gloves and satin sandals and say we've no money for butter." End quote. Cope Galway is the very best of compassion, of nurture and care in Galway. It's a model for our times. And I'm delighted to have the opportunity to celebrate and acknowledge that work with all of you today. Thank you, Gurmila Mahagavillik. Thank you so much, Vanula. While I'm not a Galwegian by birth, I have lived here now for over 20 years. And I must say that I feel immense pride that a person as esteemed, insightful, compassionate as you, hails from Galway and calls Galway your home. I believe you've captured the essence of what we're trying to achieve here in Cope Galway through our work. You say that our work is felt at the granular level of individual lives and in the best of collective action at the local level to support and enable those among us who need it most at particular times. And that is the essence of how we work 
And our call to action of let's help together is at the core of our approach to our work. And you further highlight this in relation to how we approach our work with older people. The narratives captured in this annual report underscore that the giver and the receiver are both beneficiaries of sustaining relationships. The giver and the receiver. And you have seen in our video that one third of those helping to give our service are volunteers over the age of 65. We are very committed to changing the narrative of older age and to highlight the contribution which older people make to families, communities, and to society. And thank you, Fanula, in supporting us to do this. And I wish you the very best with your future endeavors. And so now, as we come to the conclusion of our launch, I'd like to say a word of thanks. Thank you to all of you who've joined us today. I really, really appreciate that you've taken the time out of your day to join yet another Zoom. And while we've had one or two little glitches, it's gone pretty well all in all, I say with great relief. Um, thank you to all who are part of delivering on Cope Galway's strategy, especially our staff, our volunteers and our board of management. Thanks to all our local partners, both community, voluntary and statutory. And once again, I pay tribute to the local community response in Galway throughout the COVID-19 crisis, demonstrating what can be achieved with the will and the concerted effort. Thanks to Colette for producing a wonderful document with the help of all who contributed. Thanks to Sharon and our marketing and communications team for their help in delivering on this online launch. Thanks to everyone who contributes to our work in so many ways. And finally, thank you, Fanula. You truly are inspirational and I look forward to closer links in the future. And I leave you with the wonderful picture in our annual report that accompanies the poem that Fanula referred to which epitomizes a vibrant and a happy and an all over positive attitude to aging. The poem is called Warning by Jenny Joseph. And you can read this poem and our annual report via the link to follow on the next screen. So I hope you do read the report, particularly for the stories that it includes of the many people who have benefited from the work of Cope Galway. Thanks to all of you for joining us today and uh, I hope you have a lovely day. Bye bye.